I would like to acknowledge that this video is being filmed on the traditional lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. I pay my respects to their elders past and present and extend that respect to any Aboriginal, Torres Strait Islander or First Nations people who may be watching this video today. Hi guys, Steph here. I am going to be doing another sort of 24 hour or less reading vlog. Please excuse the extreme mess behind me because clearly I've not cleaned up. But it is Sunday. I received a review copy of Archangel's Resurrection by Nalini Singh. So I'm going to be reading that for review. And I thought I would just do it as a reading vlog. I have not done a huge amount today this weekend. I've not been feeling great. So when you see all my other videos that I pre-filmed yesterday, I've had a sore throat. Camera's not focusing. Why is it not focusing? The weather is actually fairly decent today so I'm just trying to catch up on laundry so hopefully that dries. I actually went out and had my nails done this morning for the first time in like two and a half years. I just one thing like it's a terrible habit but when I'm stressed and anxious I bite my nails or I pick at them or all of that so I finally caved and went and had them done. I've got a little bit of a tip on all of them but hopefully that will grow out in the next sort of couple of weeks and then it'll just be my normal nails. This is the way that I've always managed my nails which seems excessive but it works for me and it also makes me feel happy because I have colours so I just went with pink and gold and yeah but I had to also get over my social awkwardness in going and asking if they had appointments this morning so I have done all of that and I'm just currently watching Heather's live show while I'm getting some lunch ready. This live show is fantastic and just really fun. But yes, I'm gonna have some lunch. I've got to scan in some things for work and then I am probably gonna start reading. So it took me a lot longer to you know, sit down to finally start Arch Archangel's Resurrection this afternoon because I had to adult and uh, you know, write a couple of report comments and do the shopping and all those other things that I didn't really want to do, but I had to do. So now I'm gonna start this. This is my reward for being an adult. Yes, I still need those as an adult. Rewards are good. This is book 15. It is Alexander's book and I don't know much more other than that. So I'm very, very excited to dive in. I have post-it notes handy. I'm very excited. So I will check in with you after I've read a little bit. I was talking for like two minutes and apparently I wasn't filming or my camera cut off or something so I don't know quite what I said but to recap I'm a few chapters in we are following Alexander who is the Archangel of Persia and is one of the oldest Archangels around I know that he was a mentor for Raphael and I'm a little bit hazy on all of the details because it's been a while since I read a Guild Hunter book but I, I'm remembering as I'm reading and it is his relationship with Zania and their relationship has been on and off again through thousands and thousands of years. And in the very opening chapter, she is attacked by Li Wan, who is the antagonist from the series. And, you know, it kind of breaks Alexander. And then as soon as that ends, we get a cut to Cassandra, who is an angel and a seer. And she is older than Alexander and is just burdened with the possibilities of life. And there is a thread through there around the fact that there's only one timeline in which Elena, who is the main heroine of the series survives and then the next cut is to Alexander's birth so thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago and when he is born and his parents who are just who are not archangels they're just regular angels and according to everyone very kind very caring he's the, their second son and a seer comes to visit him when he is born and lets his parents know that he will be a formidable force but 
What he doesn't tell them is that he knows that Alexander will experience pain and loss and he hopes that everything else that happens in his life makes up for that. But you know, that's where we are and <laughs> I'm very intrigued. So I think we're going to spend a lot of time in Alexander's past and sort of get the relationship between these two archangels who have, you know, had this thousands of years of love and see where we go from there. So I'm 120 pages in and I have to say this is a really fascinating book. Like it has that very epic romance feel and I mean yes both these characters are thousands of years old and we're still in their like we're still in their past so we've got we've had their meeting and there is thousands of years difference between them. I think Alexander is 3000 or something and she's still only a couple hundred years old when they first meet and nothing happens because Alexander knows that there is this tendency for archangels and angels with huge amount huge amounts of power to overpower young angels and like they don't want to disrupt that balance and then they come together and they're just so similar in personality they're both ambitious they've both got an arrogance in them and they just they're drawn to one another and yet they bring out the worst in one another and it just feels like this epic relationship and that's the best way that I can put it like I'm just turning pages going what's the next disaster going to be because when they're on they're on and when they're off everything is like terrible and I forgot that Alexander and Kellyanne who is Raphael's mother were good friends and that they were contemporaries of each other she's a little bit older than Alexander so she features in here and she ascends as an archangel before Alexander does and so he learns a lot from her and their friendship and yeah it's just interesting because we're like we're so used to spending time with the present day archangels and the cadre and now we're spending it with their forebears and it's just deeply fascinating like this one feels more like almost like a historical urban fantasy in that regard like it still feels modern day but it's it's not I don't know it's so hard to describe but I'm loving it it's it's really good like I just I just want to keep reading but I have to go back to that adulting thing and make myself some dinner and have a shower and all those sorts of things so I will continue when I have done those things I forgot to film myself actually cooking dinner but I'm just having steak sandwiches for dinner because I needed something low-key so I finished Archangel's Resurrection and I really liked it and I suppose that's not a surprise to anyone who knows that I like Nalini Singh's writing style, but I suppose this book felt a little bit different in a lot of ways. I, th I mentioned before that it felt very epic in its scope in terms of the fact that it's following this couple who have been on and off for, you know, millennia. The other really interesting thing that I think this book did is where uh, I mentioned how we're dealing with the archangels and in particular those who've been around for a lot longer like in the grand scheme of things Raphael is still the the youngest archangel now that we've had everything that's gone on with Liwan and, and and all of that you've got a whole bunch of ancient archangels who've risen so for anyone who's not familiar with the series in this world when angels get old enough and tired enough they go into a sleep which is not a death it's just asleep and they can sleep for millennia and they can choose the time that they wake up and the point being that the archangels who have the most power do not they rule for a really really long time but it makes way for new archangels and new power and then it comes in cycles and because of everything that happened with Liwan and the war a lot of the ancient archangels had to had to wake to fill spots in the archangels ranks and so that's what's happened there's an imbalance there's a lot of ancient archangels and a lot of the conversation that comes in to play i think around this is how does living such a long life affect your relationships how does that affect the way that you think about the world how does it change the way that you view what's happening what you place value on and in that sense this fe almost felt very fantasy like because you have these really ancient characters but to them every moment is precious and it has shaped who they are and it's shaped everything around them and of course because we're seeing this long life between them you know we're getting hints at things that have happened in the series like we get exactly how Nazir came to be the way that he is from the perspective of Alexander whose brother was responsible for that and we get to know more about Raphael's mother through the eyes of Alexander who was her best friend you know the timeline in this book was really interesting as well because I mentioned we we get the opening where Liwan attacks Zania and she falls into a sleep and then we get the history so we go right back in time and we get the history up until that point and then we see 
how Alexander deals with the fact that Zaniya may not awaken this time and then when she does what happens and this is like 10 years after that so like there are these weird time jumps but it felt really natural in the stories it's really hard to describe it for me I just I, I like being in this world I think this book is really about building up the world I think it's about the history of this world that Nalini Singh has created yes Raphael and Elena are in it they are very minor characters in this story it's such an interesting book and all I could think about was one, while I was reading was one, this feels epic, and two, living for this long, the amount of things that you could experience, but also the complications of that, it's just sort of staggering. Thank you very much to Hachette for sending this to me. I am incredibly grateful. Nalini Singh continues to just be an author that I love to be immersed in her world, and I know it's not for everyone, but I love this sort of thing. Like, I, I don't do high fantasy very well, but this, which has roots in sort of what we would consider traditionally our world, but these amazing, fantastical, supernatural elements is just, is deeply fascinating. And I, like, this sort of feels like an ending, but it also doesn't in a lot of ways. So I don't know if there are plans for more books. I haven't, haven't looked into that anymore. But honestly, I would read about plenty of these characters and just getting their stories. Like this didn't necessarily complicate the greater overarching plot of the series, but it expanded the world so much and it was just so good. Thank you for watching. Let me know if you have read the Guild Hunters book and if you've read Archangel's Resurrection or if you're planning on picking it up. Yeah, I'm gonna have to think on this one for a little while, but I did use lots of tabs. So like, there are just moments in here that I just enjoyed. So I'm devolving into incoherent. I hope that wherever you are in the world you're staying safe and healthy and I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye everyone.